It's like walking on a broken leg without crutches and wondering why you aren't healing faster. Did you have a narcissist in your life? Did you have a toxic person in your life that keeps you trapped? And you finally broken free and you finally got to the place where you are free from that person. But every once in a while, you still get a text. You still get a phone call. They still appear at your job or at your house. And you get to the place where it keeps feeling like it's just dragging out. Maybe you've gone no contact with a narcissist and you're like, okay, great, this is awesome. And then a month later, you're back in a relationship because they reach out. Maybe you're like, I don't want to block because, you know, hey, this isn't something that I do. This isn't something I feel comfortable with. And then two years later, you're still going back and forth with the same person. This, the push, pull, the in, out, all these kind of things that were the relationships on and off. And like, wait a second, like what's actually going on? Because the reason why this happens is because a person hasn't gone no contact. What I believe, what I teach, what I try to help people understand on all areas of life, on all different walks of life, everybody's on a different stage in their journey. But ultimately, if you're dealing with a toxic person, you're going to work that way to getting to a place of going no contact. I think going no contact with a narcissist is necessary to heal. It is needed for you to grow, heal, and change. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. We do that on all different platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Would love to have you follow on any of those. Just look up Raw Motivations. If you're listening on the podcast today, like, rate, and review, but we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify as well under Raw Motivations. So check us out. A couple people have been asking about the wife's perspective. We recently have done a podcast, brand new. Uh, at the time of this recording, there's three episodes that are out and that happen every weekly, uh, every week on Monday. And that podcast is called Trauma, Drama, and Life with myself, Ben Taylor, and my wife, Kayla Taylor, joining me in those podcasts where we're able to talk and share a small glimpse into a piece of our life. And if you want to know more about that, um, check that out because we'd love to have you interact with us as there as well. Also, real quick, uh, if you haven't had a chance to be able to check out the NARC app, N-A-R-C-A-P-P.com, NARCapp.com, it stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. Community of like-minded people with courses, challenges, uh, exercises, accountability, advice, encouragement to help you grow and develop in your healing process. Also a way for you to be able to engage with other people with weekly live events that happen inside the app and also monthly coaching where you're able to do Zoom calls uh, with people all across the globe logging in that are actually working on their healing growth and change and getting coached by myself, other coaches, other therapists all around the country to try to help you move forward, to try to help you grow and continue in that journey. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, if you want to reach out to either work through the trauma bond or work through specific areas that I talk to people to help them gain clarity through the confusion, then go to rawmotivations.com. You can click one-on-ones. would love to interact with you there, be able to be a help on your journey as you heal, as you grow, and as you change. So a lot of times I say going no contact with a narcissist is needed, is necessary for healing. Because a lot of times we don't take a close look at what's actually happened in the relationship. What you've experienced being with a narcissist is trauma, is some crazy, crazy stuff that is meant to make you feel crazy. And a couple things, there's four things that happen when we're talking about trauma in the narcissistic relationship. When you look back on it and when you're, when you're thinking about like going no contact, first thing is a lot of times you minimized it. Like you minimize what was actually happening in the relationship. You minimize the hitting, you minimize the physical like activity, you minimize the coercion, you minimize the screaming, you minimize the abuse that happened in the relationship. It wasn't that bad. Like this, you know, it, it really like it was bad at times, but it wasn't that bad. And a lot of times you look back on the past and you only pick up the good moments. And you minimize the other ones of like, you know, it really wasn't that bad. Oftentimes you're not just minimizing it, but you're also hiding it. It didn't happen. And you want to change it even in your mind of like, hey, that didn't happen. Like, I don't even remember it. Like, it doesn't even exist. You know, I, I, t I told other people that I was okay. I told everybody, you know, hey, like, he seems that way or she seems that way. But like, it's, it's really fine. A lot of times you hide it. Other times you ignored it. You just flat out pretended that didn't happen. 
a lot of times that's easier to cope with, right? That's easier to be able to say, like, whatever happened to me actually didn't happen. And the fourth one, a lot of times you explained it away. Minimized it, hit it, ignored it, and explained it away. And a lot of times when a person explains it away, they justify it. And the goal is, let me run from the truth. Let me run away from what's actually happened. A lot of times people want to run away from the pain. Then they need to deal with it. The problem is when a person runs away from the pain, they never deal with it. They never go through it. They never walk through the process of healing. And as a result, it's always still there. And they're taking that baggage. They're taking that pain from relationship to relationship to relationship without actually solving the wound. Because there's real wounds when it comes to narcissism. There's real wounds when it comes to narcissistic abuse. There's not just times physical scars and physical things, but it's mental things, emotional things. Abuse that a lot of times people don't pick up on walking down the street and seeing another person, but that is happening inside of you day in, day out, that's tearing down your self-worth, your self-confidence, that's tearing down a, a, a whole structure of who you are. This is why there's a lot of different things out there that are being used to help people in abusive relationships to get through trauma, EMDR, EMI, tapping, therapy, uh, uh, brain waves, like a lot of different things that, that people are developing, that people are discussing and people are using to try to be able to help people process through trauma. So let's talk about staying no contact because staying no contact and, and not actually uh, breaking that, like not actually being like, so, like, like, let's clarify. Sometimes people will say like, hey, I'm no contact, but the other day they text me. That, that's not what we mean by no contact, okay? No contact, block, ghost, okay? So what that means is you take your phone and you block them on all social media, you block them on all phone functions, you make sure they have no access to you whatsoever, so when they try to knock on the virtual door of your phone, they can't get in. But what happens is when you get away from a narcissist and you still have that door open or you still have the possibility of them interacting with you again, what's actually happening is you're staying in contact. And the example would be, it's like walking on a broken leg without crutches and wondering why you aren't healing faster. So many people come to the table and they're like, I want to get better. I want to heal. I want to fix my mindset. And I'm like, when's the last time you talked to the toxic person? They're like, yesterday. Now, I'm not saying that to judge you because I know the trauma bond's real. If we haven't broken that, then a lot of times it's going to keep happening, which is why on a day-to-day -day basis when I work with people, I'm like trying to understand where you are to help you to get to that place, to help walk you through the truth of the situation because that's what sets you free. When you realize, wait a second, this person was so toxic and they do not align with the vision and values that I, am, I have going forward. But when you stay in contact with a narcissist, basically what is happening is you are walking on a broken leg without crutches, and then you're wondering why your leg isn't healing faster. Doesn't work that way. So four things I wanna be able to tell you about removing yourself from the trauma, because I think this is crucial and essential for you to actually walk through this to understand, hey, there's a way out. I'm not saying that just time heals it. I'm not saying that just knowledge heals it because a lot of times I see it doesn't. You normally have to have a coach or a therapist or someone that comes alongside and helps you process some of this because sometimes your gut, your instinct, and all the different ideas have been so shoved down and so beaten down by a toxic person that you're not sure what to do and you're not sure what to believe. So four things to help remove yourself from the trauma. First, rewire your story. Actually go in and understand the truth. The things that you've been believing a lot of times are on fiction and fantasy and then the hope of, of a maybe, but not on reality of what's been demonstrated on a day-to-day -day basis, what's been shown as far as love and break that cognitive dissonance, rewire your story. Number two, reduce your anxiety. You're constantly getting anxiety, anxious thoughts and everything because of the interactions with the narcissist, because of interactions with that toxic person. So you have to be able to limit that. You have to be able to put your phone on do not disturb if you still have, if you're not at the place of no contact. Like you have to be able to limit the amount of communication so that you can start to reduce the anxiety that you're having on a day-to-day -day basis because an anxious mind is not able to heal very well. You can look up uh, Brennan Bichard and Mel Robbins' video of the High Five Challenge because that starts off the day trying to develop a safe and a calm nervous system. So you're not constantly triggered and not constantly anxious starting off. 
but helping to like recenter you. Rewire your story, reduce your anxiety. Number three, renew your energy. I think a lot of times this gets overlooked in just the industry as a whole of people not taking care of themselves health-wise. Whether that's getting enough sleep, whether that's adding greens to your diet, whether that's you know having some energy with making energy, with, with going for a walk, with working out, like you have to be able to put something back in that's investing back into you. A lot of times that gets discounted. You know, are you walking? Are you drinking enough water? Like all different types of things to make sure that you're starting to build up the energy to be able to process some of the healing, to be able to process removing yourself from that trauma. So rewire your story, reduce your anxiety, renew your energy, and reframe your mindset. Because as you rewire your story and as you reduce the, the stressors that are coming in on your life, and as you start to go and, and grow in that area, then you also have to reframe where you're going, what you're looking at. Because if you keep having this person in your mind, in, your, in, the, in the sideline, then you're going to keep going back. But you have to see, hey, this is the direction I'm going, and this person no longer fits in the vision that I have for my life. Which is why we say so many times, block, ghost, go no contact. You see, when you still leave the door open for the narcissist to come back into your life, what it is is imagine you had a burn on your arm and we put a bandage, a bandage over it. And every time that person comes back into your life, you rip it off. And each time you rip it off, it actually rips off the scab that's working on healing your arm. And then you wonder, why is my arm not getting better? Well, it's because every day you're ripping off the bandage and you're reopening, you're re-engaging the wound, you're re-traumatizing the pain that's already on your arm. You're re-traumatizing yourself with that person coming back into your life that was toxic, manipulative, and doesn't have your best interest in mind. So remove yourself from the trauma, rewire your story, reduce your anxiety, renew your energy, reframe your mindset, block, ghost, go no contact. Because at the end of the day, I want you to understand, you're not crazy, you're not alone, and you're not hopeless. Reach out for help.